this is Rashida and Marshall. Thank you again for tuning in to another video. This is going to be a clip where we talk a little bit more about diastasis recti. I wanted to share some information regarding how it develops during pregnancy, some of the factors that lead to it being something that, that pregnant women pregnant women may deal with, and then also sharing some tips regarding what can be done to prevent it from developing if you're currently pregnant, as well as things that can be done um, if you currently are experiencing it but are looking to prevent it from worsening. So it's very apparent that during pregnancy, the abdominal wall is undergoing a lot of different changes due to the stretching and strain that happens because of the growing uterus and the growing baby. And having a good understanding of the different components of the abdominal wall and how they all work together um, helps to kind of get a better picture of diastasis recti. So we have three different components of the abdominal wall we have the rectus abdominis which is what undergoes the most changes during pregnancy and i'll jump back to that in a moment we have our internal and our external obliques and then we have our transverse abdominis so the rectus abdominis is more of the um, the, it's the outermost layer and it's kind of like the face of the abdominal wall when we think of our six pack or four pack or whatever or having washboard abs um, typically individuals are referring to the rectus abdominis since it's the outermost layer and then we have the internal and the external obliques which are on the sides and these play um, they definitely help with helping us to maintain stability and especially uh, working against forces that may shift us off balance and things like that and then our transverse abdominis, this is the innermost or the deepest um, layer of, sorry, <laughs> bugs. This is the transverse abdominis is the innermost layer of the core. Um, and it's kind of like the corset, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and that really plays a, a very important role in our stability and our ideal core functioning and things of that nature. So again, out of the three, the rectus abdominis is the one that undergoes the most changes. So the linea alba, which is the, the line that darkens during pregnancy down the, down the midline, that helps to keep the rectus abdominis muscles together pre-pregnancy and during pregnancy the linea alba um, thins out that that connective tissue thins out and that's what allows for the rectus abdominis to separate and create space for the belly so that can lead to long-lasting effects if there is um, if work is not done during pregnancy to help continue working on core tension or if something happens during or after pregnancy that may worsen it um, and make it difficult to go back to its pre-pregnancy state. And that's where, we, that's where we see the biggest changes occurring with the rectus abdominis. So when it comes to diastasis recti, half of women who are pregnant uh, see their belly return to its pre-pregnancy state afterwards um, or close to it, but the other half um, are more than likely at a greater risk of developing diastasis recti, which will normally become present about six months postpartum. So diastasis recti can be described as um, an abnormal distance between the core muscles or between the rectus abdominis muscles uh, and a lot of times women who are experiencing it may see that their core does an abnormal um, doming or cone, coning type of effect so when curling up or, or rounding the spine the core may jet out and kind of create this weird looking type of thing that can be very you know um, unusual for a woman who is experiencing that for the first time and that is again due to that abnormal distance between the rectus abdominis muscles. Another big factor that um, comes into play as it pertains to diastasis recti is the inability to create tension across the abdominal wall. So that occurs because the uh, core muscles separate at a distance that is much further than ideal. The connective tissue is very thin and all of those factors help or cause for the core muscles to be un unable to create that tension so if we are thinking about you know why is creating tension across the core muscles important you can think of all of the different ways that our core helps for us to move throughout our day-to-day -day activities so everything from maintaining ideal posture to helping us with our workouts engaging core muscles is very important for a large variety of the exercises and, and movements that we do regularly um, it helps to prevent there from being excessive back pain a weak core can lead to um, 
uh, increased chances of back pain. It throws our pelvic floor out of alignment and can lead to pelvic floor dysfunction. And there are many other things that, you know, that could be added to that. So that inability to create that tension across the core and help for it to, um, or allow for it to help you in those regular movements or play a part in those regular functions can definitely lead to there being a, um, a lower quality of life for a woman who is experiencing it because so many other aspects of her life are now being affected. So there are several things that can be done to prevent its development or prevent it from becoming a bigger problem um, if you currently have it. And so I wanted to go into some different tips that may be helpful. Uh, the first thing is to definitely periodically check for diastasis recti um, to see if there are any signs of it. There is a link below to a video that shows what that looks like, but um, it is basically taking your pointer finger and your middle finger, you'd be laying down on your back and you would place those two fingers right above the belly button and then you would curl up as though you were going to do a crunch or a sit up and just, you know, lifting the shoulders and head and neck off of the, um, off of the ground and you would want to feel tension under your fingers or within the abdominal wall. If you feel that tension, the core contracting as it normally would if you were performing those exercises, then that's normally a good sign that diastasis recti is not present. If you do the curl up though and your fingers are able to continue pushing and there's no sign of tension within the core muscles, then that could be a sign that you are experiencing diastasis recti. If that's the case, if you um, are experiencing it, it's highly recommended to visit a, um, a physical therapist or someone who is trained in, in women's health issues so that they can guide you through the proper um, exercises and movements that will help to work your core back to its pre-pregnancy state. You would also want to limit movements and exercises that have the potential to worsen diastasis recti. So this could be things such as crunches or sit-ups, um, planks, those movements cause for there to be excessive strain on the core muscles. Um, if you are taking classes such as um, Pilates or um, you know other fitness classes, then being able to um, speak with your trainer or instructor early on so that you can ensure that they are aware that the exercises that you do aren't going to be something that causes for there to be additional strain on the core muscles. Being aware of your alignment is also a big one as well. So just as I mentioned how the core plays a big part in working alongside other aspects of our body, when we think of maintaining proper posture and keeping the core engaged, that plays a part in, again, preventing there from being back pain, pelvic floor staying in alignment, and it helps for you to continue working your core all throughout you know all throughout the day so if you are thinking of your alignment when you're sitting in the car when you're at work if you're just you know standing around the house doing something thinking of lifting tall keeping the core engaged um, that's going to help to increase that muscle memory and allow for your core to be aware and, and those muscles to know what it feels like for them to be in their ideal positioning and again that'll help to prevent there from being additional problems later down the line Moving your body regularly is also very good too. So if you've gotten clearance from your physician to engage in physical activity, um, being able to just move, even if it's just walking or doing very low impact movements, which are very beneficial during pregnancy, all of that will help to increase your body awareness and you'll be able to be in tune with your core muscles and help to know what it feels like to keep the core engaged. So regularly exercising and checking in with your body awareness is also very helpful. Deep breathing will help for you to improve your core functioning as well. When we are practicing deep breathing, it allows for us to um, work on the engagement of our core muscles and when, when we're taking our breath in and we have that expansion and then when we exhale and we tighten the core muscles, all of those play a part in our core functioning and tying it into the other aspects of our body that play a part in pregnancy. So core breathing, it might not seem like a big thing when you are you know, taking a few moments to take deep inhales and exhales, but that can be another way to continue working on um, connecting to that core tension, what it feels like to tighten and bring the core in, and again, will lead to um, 
positive benefits later down the line. And the last tip is to be very patient with your body. So once you know you are in your postpartum phase and you are preparing to jump back in to a physical activity regimen, um, being patient with yourself in terms of not jumping into movements or exercises that may be too intense or put too much strain on the core muscles and understanding that your body just went through major, major changes and your core went through a lot of you know shifting and, and um, adjustments and things of that nature so that you could give birth to that healthy baby boy or girl so as it pertains to allowing your belly to go back to its pre-pregnancy state or before that just being patient with the movements that you do and um, allowing for it to be a gradual process and even if it's just you know even if at, at this particular moment you're simply laying on your back and working on just connecting to the core muscles again and connecting to your pelvic floor and doing movements that will help in that area that will be very very helpful in the long run rather than than jumping into you know doing very intense core workouts or core movements that could ultimately increase the chances of diastasis recti being a permanent um, a permanent issue so that's always a good thing to think about is to be gradual and patient and your your body will lead you to where where you should be in due time so that is what I have for you guys today regarding diastasis recti and tips that can be put in place to help as it pertains to physical activity. Um, again, at the bottom I included a link to a clip that goes into what you can do to check for diastasis recti as well as um, I didn't I don't think I mentioned this but there's also a link that will um, show you some things that you can do to help work on your posture and check your posture and alignment um, as you are going through your pregnancy and even if you're not pregnant things that are good to just help you with checking your your posture overall so I hope that this was helpful for those who maybe were interested in learning a little bit more about it um, if you have any tips or stories stories or things that have worked for you in the past if you have been pregnant um, I'd love to hear you know some of your experiences um, and things that have been beneficial for you but until next time thank you all for watching and I will have some more videos for you soon